This episode is sponsored by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. Be sure and check them out and be sure and use the promo code Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. A little over 15 years ago, when I started my private practice, I had to learn a lot, and most of it the hard way. And I don't think you need to do the same. Hi, I'm Gordon Brewer, a licensed psychotherapist, and welcome to the Practice of Therapy podcast, part of the Psychcraft Network of Podcasts. Join me in this journey of discovery as we have conversations with other leaders and professionals in both the mental and allied health fields. Join us as we explore both the business and clinical sides of running a private practice. folks and welcome to the podcast. I'm Gordon Brewer and this is episode number 288 of the Practice of Therapy podcast and so glad you've joined me and I uh, hope you'll take time to follow us wherever you might be listening to the podcast. So I'm looking forward to you hearing from my guest today, Danielle Branch Brown and Danielle is no stranger to this podcast. She was on on the podcast earlier um I think maybe it's been a year or two now. I'll have to go back and look, but it was always good to reconnect to to folks like Danielle and just our conversation around being authentic and and really genuine with people in our sessions and also um, talk a little bit about what it means to maybe share a little bit of our own lives with our with our clients. I know that the, for a lot of us in our training, we were really taught to be kind of that blank slate therapist. And I know I've had this same conversation with some other therapists here, but um, one of the things that I've learned over the years is, is that I think when you do a little bit of self-disclosure and really kind of share with people a little bit of our own struggles as human beings it goes a long way with really validating the things that they're going through. And um, so Danielle and I talk about that particular topic and looking forward to you hearing from Danielle. Uh, but before we get to my conversation with Danielle, I'd love for you to go over and check out some of the resources we've got, and in particular, the various communities we've got with the practice of therapy. Um, There's a community just called the Practice of Therapy Community, which is a free community for anyone that wants to join. Um, All of my communities are now housed on the Circle platform, and um, one of the reasons for doing that is I just really didn't want to have to battle with uh, all the social media algorithms and that sort of thing. So the Circle platform is probably kind of similar to something like Facebook or LinkedIn as far as how you share stuff. Um, but anyway, I'd love for you to go over and find out more about that by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash community. And um, the other thing that I've got going on right now um, is this particular episode is coming out. I've got a new cohort of my focus group that's getting ready to start. It's the group practice focus group. And this particular group, it's a a mastermind group. And it's specifically for those folks that maybe have smaller group practices, in particular group practices that are also insurance based. And so I've got that group that's going and I'd love for you to go check it out and join this next cohort. We, our cohorts run for six months, so it gives us a time gives us time to kind of dive in deep with each other and talk about the different things that we're working on. And um, so that's starting uh, this month in the month of July. We haven't set the specific date yet, but I'd love for you to go over and apply. And this group is going to be a small group. I'm limiting it to uh, just eight people. Um, And that way we can just get to know each other well and really be supportive of each other. This last cohort that I were that's finishing up was a great cohort of people, wonderful therapists and, you know, 
in smaller group practices and just really helping each other navigate some of the things that are unique to smaller group practices that are also insurance based. So go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group and find out more about that. I'd love to have you join us and, and apply. And if you, as always, you can reach out to me if you have any questions about that. And also real quickly here, before we get to my conversation with Danielle, I'd love for you to hear from one of the members of the Sightcraft Network and also our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. Hi, I'm Whitney Owens. If you don't know me, I am the person behind the Wise Practice Podcast, which is part of the Sightcraft Network of Podcasts. I am so proud to be a part of this network, along with my good friend, Gordon Brewer, who's doing such amazing work on helping people on their practice journey. If you haven't discovered the Wise Practice Podcast yet, you can find it anywhere you listen to podcasts. I'd love for you to join us as we explore how to grow a faith-based practice that brings you the income you need and the lifestyle you want. Be sure to check out the podcast and other helpful information at WhitneyOwens.com. There you will learn more about the Wise Practice community, how to become a member, as well as information on the 2023 Wise Practice Summit. And hey, Sightcraft Network is a sponsor, so hope you can make it. One of the keys to a successful private practice is having the right systems and processes in place to make things run as smoothly as possible. With a system like Therapy Notes, you'll have more time to spend with what matters most, your clients. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. Your clinical records will be secure with less paperwork, which means you can give a much better quality of care. It's the EHR that Gordon uses in his practice. Be sure to check them out today by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure to use the promo code Gordon to get two months free. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm so happy to have back with me on the podcast, Danielle Branch Brown. Hi, Danielle. Hey, how are you? It's good to have you back. And I, I as we back. were chatting ahead of time, I can't remember quite when it was, but it's probably been at least a year or so since we were probably we last over. chatted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, I'm looking forward to our conversation today just about just all the stuff about being a therapist and you know mm-hmm. what what all that entails but if for for folks that don't know you why don't you tell folks a little more about yourself and how you've landed where you've landed sure so i've been very real with people these days about my realization as i like unpacked and started doing well not started but continued some pretty deep like inner child work and things like that, that I realized my initial choice to become a therapist was quite a codependent one. And I've also realized that I'm not alone in that uh, Mm -hmm. decision, right? That a lot of us come to the decision to be therapists and be helpers and healers out of spaces of pain, right? Out of a need to find healing for ourselves, right? Out of some gap or some you know, wound, right, that we have either experienced or seen or whatever, right? And so I I really, truly have been real with myself and the people around me about that fact, right, that I grew up in Baltimore City, right, Mm -hmm. single mom, not seeing very many healthy relationships around me, right, not really feeling like I was witnessing a whole lot of thriving, in my community, just in general, right, as a a Black woman, uh, you know, being raised by a single mom. And I think there was this part of me, right, that was like, I want to help people. I need to be a part of the fixing, the saving, the healing, Mm -hmm. right, whatever language you want to use, right? And so as I've done a lot of my work, right, my passion has always been couples work and relationship 
work, recognizing that our attachments, our connections, right, our experiences and our relationships are a huge part of what makes us who we are, what makes up our worldview. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's always been a value of mine. But as I've done my healing work and, you know, really been focusing on my own, like, personal alignment and, like, codependent no more, right? Hashtag mm-hmm. read mm-hmm. the book. <laughs> right. I, I've, I've gotten to a space where really I am wanting to do, and I am doing less of the, like, therapy, you know, fee-for-service style of showing up for the community and for the field of mental health and more taking a holistic approach to healing, right? Recognizing that healing, well-being, wellness, right, is it goes so beyond the therapy room, mm-hmm. right? That we can show up for 50 minutes every single week for the rest of our lives and not change a thing, right? If we're not being intentional about applying those things to our everyday lives and, and figuring mm-hmm. out how to translate, right, what we're getting from the therapy, the therapy space into wellness. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I'm doing right now is workshops, trainings, community education, community events, just to, as the world, I think, and and as communities are destigmatizing therapy, trying to take it a little bit further and destigmatizing wellness as a whole, right? right? So we're doing like crafting corners where we're doing series is like beating for self care, right? We're mm-hmm. we're tapping in into our creativity and showing people that self care and like showing up for yourself does not have to always be this like big intense deep jargony thing, right? That sometimes you can just make a bracelet <laughs> and mm-hmm. feel really mindful in that bracelet that mm-hmm. process, right? And mm-hmm. do that with a group of people who are talking about wellness and family and love and spirituality. And so I've, I really, I think have gotten to a space of maybe like less pressure, like less of the should statements of what my presence in the mental health field is supposed to look like. Right. Right. Um, So we've been doing movement therapy classes, which is very much helping folks to, and honestly, I'm getting a lot out of it too. Right. Mm -hmm. The to really connect to the mind body connection, right? Recognizing that regulating our nervous systems and like feeling empowered and safe when it, within our physical selves is a huge part of emotional, mental, spiritual, relational wellness, right? right? That like right. if I don't feel comfortable and safe and empowered in my own body, me showing up for a partner, I mean, that's going to be hard, right? Like, Mm -hmm. so anyway, doing a lot of this, like in from the inside out style of Mm -hmm. um, helping folks create safety and space and alignment. Well, one of the things that occurs to me is you're, you're saying all of that is what you, I think what you've landed on is something that's been on my radar, especially over the last year or two. And that is the healing power of community. Yeah. And that you, you know, when we're going through tough stuff and and we learned this, you know, the silver lining to, to COVID has been the fact that when we get isolated, we don't do well. Mm -hmm. You know, when we get Mm -hmm. disconnected from people and disconnected from our community or people that we feel safe with and all of that sort of thing, that that's when things can really take a nosedive for us. Mm -hmm. I think emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, all of that, all that sort of thing. And so I think, I think you, you've, you're, you're doing something that is, is really pretty brilliant in that I like that term of the inside out of really looking at what is it that you know recognizing as a person that is a therapist a helper all of that sort of thing recognizing okay what I need is no different than what other people Mm -hmm. need and so how Mm -hmm. can I do how can I help them with that Mm -hmm. yes that's exactly yes that's exactly the space um, that we are coming from, right? That mm-hmm. 
this the the style of training of like blank slate and like somehow I'm supposed to leave my human self at the door when I come into the therapy room but also I'm supposed to know everything this just like very unrealistic expectations <laughs> floating around that right. uh, it, that really creates a lot of shame I think for a lot of us because mm-hmm. it's inevitable that we won't live up to those expectations like it just is inevitable yeah. right that, yeah and, and so, it, yeah mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with you huh? and I'm, I'm gonna say an amen here because that's <laughs> that's exactly the kind of stuff that I've been thinking a lot about in recent years is that in particularly my work with people doing supervision with people that are Mm. in the middle, you know, going through the licensure stuff, what, Mm -hmm. what we get trained in our graduate programs and all that sort of thing. The whole thing about the, the blank slate, Mm -hmm. uh, I've kind of figured out that's not always so helpful to people. Mm -hmm. I I think there's, there's a lot of therapy and a lot of healing that can occur by a little more Mm self-disclosure about sharing. Okay. You know, I understand what you're going through because I've gone through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is what I found works for me Mm -hmm. and doing that in a therapeutic setting and being able to get people to, to feel safe and be able to share things Mm -hmm. in a safe place is just, is just huge in my mind. Yeah. 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 And, and I think research has shown that the relationship between helper and like person who is showing up to help themselves is one of the number one key components to growth and change and safety Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and so like connecting human to human we know is the key to success but then somehow in our training that gets lost right Right. and and and, right in the sort of practice of therapy and so Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. I used the- Yeah, yeah. It just gave me a free plug there. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. But, yeah. yeah. So that's what we're doing. Like, that's really what we are focusing our energy and attention on. And like, really just creating safe space and programming for clinicians specifically to begin to learn what that means for them in the field, mm-hmm. right? Like, mm-hmm. to really acknowledge like own respect their experience of that Mm -hmm. um, and then begin to build from there right not just sitting in it and sulking in it and like being mad about it right like being mad about it and then making choice about what that means moving forward yeah right what does alignment look like what does Mm -hmm. really freeing up your human self to be a part of the process look like right mm-hmm. right yeah i love i love that concept you were talking about just with doing like crafting and that kind mm-hmm. of thing uh, i don't i don't have it on right now but i one of the things that i started doing recently and i get my friends tease me about it but i started doing those paracord bl- bracelets yes, called, yeah those survival bracelets and stuff like that and yeah it's just there's something about it just working with your hands mm-hmm. and, and being able to create something that is just healing and i think mm-hmm. that doing that in the context of a community where yes. you're both kind of working on the same things, but then you're having these deep, meaningful conversations about what's going on in your life and that sort of thing. I'm reminded of, at least, you know, I think about probably our grandparents and that sort of thing. And with it being summertime, it mm-hmm. as we're recording this, just thinking about sitting on my grandmother's porch and breaking beans, you know, from mm-hmm. the garden, you know, mm-hmm. just you know, green beans and and are doing something along those lines, you know, just, and and then just having those conversations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely been just an eye-opening experience, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Recognizing the importance of community. I think it's almost like I I found out that we were complicating the process of healing. Mm -hmm. Like almost, it's almost as if we weren't trusting the fact that our brains and our bodies want to heal. Like our brains Mm -hmm. and our bodies want freedom for for us. And like, they, like our natural processes, like the regulation of the nervous system and all these sorts Mm -hmm. of things, like we were built 
for growth mm-hmm. and healing and survival and evolution and all these things. And sometimes we just have to get out of our own way and just create space that feels connecting. Right. <laughs> and that, right. that, like, if we can just simplify sometimes, yeah. at least sometimes, right, the process, mm-hmm. then our bodies and our brains can be free to do that healing work by connecting with other people that feel mm-hmm. safe. Yeah. So, yeah. So we talked about this a little bit, but what, if you don't mind sharing, what were some of the catalysts for you of changing the way you're thinking about Mm -hmm. how we do therapy and that sort of thing? Yeah, I think, I think for a while I felt burnt out, right? So I've been doing therapy for 10 years and I think maybe in 2019, 2020, like when the pandemic started and things like that, I really started to feel the burnout setting in. And as I like unpacked it and and did my own therapy with my therapist and journaled and all these sorts of things, I really realized that I was not burnt out. I was misaligned because every time I would take a break and I would come back to it, I would be burnt out again within like a month or something. Right. Mm-hmm. And and that's when you know, like this is this is not about needing a break. This is not about, oh, I need to take better care of myself in order for this to like feel better. No, this is because the this thing, like this way of showing up feels misaligned <laughs> with me and like my like my beliefs and my values and and my identity and all these different things. And so I started processing why. Like what is this misalignment? Like, where is it coming from? Right. And that's when I really started to realize how many should statements were wrapped up in it. Right. Like how many things I were, I was doing, you know, because I felt like that's what I was supposed to be doing. Right. Or that's how I was supposed to be doing it. Right. Or that's when I was supposed to do it. Like, so I just, I I was able to, once I assessed the fact that it was a misalignment and where it was coming from, I really started to recognize that, man, there are some gaps, right? Like there are some things that we're not as a community doing well always, Mm -hmm. right? In terms of like our teaching and holding space for ourselves and for like the actual community of helpers and healers. Mm -hmm. Uh, Then like you were saying this earlier, Gordon, I started doing supervision Mm -hmm. and then, then it was affirmed and it was like, oh, snap. I'm not the only an individual experience for me. This is happening in our field, right? right? And I realized just like the repetition, <laughs> like I was hearing myself over and over again mm-hmm. in my supervisees. And I was like, oh, like this is a like a problem. Yeah. And so that really was like professionally some of the catalyst type stuff. But then on a personal level, I, I spoke to you about this, Gordon. I lost my grandmother a couple mm-hmm. of years back. And I think the what what grief does to your brain, or at least you know my personal experience of it, it blew the walls out on so many of my mm-hmm. frameworks and like paradigms, like so many of my like should statements and boxes that I've been carrying. Mm-hmm. It like it challenged so many of those (laughs) Uh, because of just like the unique experience that grief brings to you. And so Mm -hmm. I be, I like that. It it almost was like a season where I began to give myself permission to challenge stuff, like where Mm -hmm. I really started to, another piece of this is I remember in one of my therapy sessions where we were processing this grief of my grandmother, because I, my husband and I, we brought her in for in-home hospice and I mean, it really was one of the hardest seasons of my life. And so I was processing this with my therapist and we were talking about like the gifts that I got from my grandmother. I called her Nana, right? So gifts Mm -hmm. from Nana. And -hmm. one of the things that she used to say to me all the time was girl, please. Like my grandmother was so, I I don't want to say nonchalant, but like, uh, what's the language I'm looking for? Uh Like outside Uh of the boxes. Mm-hmm. Like she, like I thought. I remember when she was here. I really, in many ways, thought my grandma was kind of weird and like uh-huh. kind of spunky. Like she was very like spunky and mm-hmm. like 
like I think again before I it was how used to see it as maybe like aggression or like no um, filter maybe like no filter right yeah and and so as I like processed and like began to embody some of those attributes for myself just starting to realize like maybe some of the spaces in in her evolution that she had gotten to that I was not at right right which is detaching from should statements detaching from rigidity of systems that were not built for you detaching from Mm -hmm. narratives that are not helpful but actually harmful and repressing right Mm -hmm. so anyway I began using some of that self-talk from that gift that I got from my nana which is like when I find myself in some sort of overthinking spirally shame-filled thing like girl please Right. Girl, please. <laughs> uh-huh. um, yeah. Sort of giving myself the the realization that is that life goes so much beyond and is so much bigger than any of the things and the stuff and the bullshit and the shit statements mm-hmm. and the sh- and all these things, right? Mm-hmm. So anyway, it, yeah. so it was like a dual experience of like professional like burnout misalignment and unpacking of the stuff, right? And seeing myself and so many of my supervisees and some of the struggles that they have had in our field. And then, you know, having that experience of grief and loss yeah. and, and allowing that experience to really, honestly, it sounds so dramatic and I don't care, right? But to really transform the way that I like see things and life and boxes and structures and yes yes and shit statements essentially yeah 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 as you were as you were talking about all that Danielle one of the things that just came to mind for me and just thinking about how we do things in our world and just how most of us were trained in graduate mm-hmm. school and that sort of thing we're we're kind of we're kind of given this idea that this whole imposter syndrome idea would come out of graduate school thinking, oh, we're not good enough yet, mm-hmm. or we're yeah. not, we're not qualified enough yeah. yet. And you've got to do all the jump through all these hoops and mm-hmm. you've got to do all these things. And then we'll let you know when you're, when you're good right. enough, you mm-hmm. know, or, you know, you until you have this certification or that certification mm-hmm. uh, or, you know, this many years of experience, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think it, I think it just feeds into this whole, all of the should statements and all of that sort of thing that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, is that I think anybody that, you know, I'm not saying that we don't need training and I'm not saying that we don't need Mm -hmm. to, to understand how the, how the human mind works and how all of those kinds of things, but a person's ability to help others is there and and don't cut yourself short on your effectiveness mm-hmm. by thinking you should do this or you ought to do that or once once somebody rubber stamps you with a, mm-hmm. a certain certain you know credential or whatever then you then you're free to to actually help people or whatever mm-hmm. You know, yep. I, I don't know if that's getting at what you're no, thinking about. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. You, 100%. You're reminding me of, I did a CEU training and one of the participants, she said, she made a realization or made a point that like really goes with what you're saying, where we're, we're maybe the only field or at least one of the only fields that in order to feel good enough we are like spending ridiculous amounts of money on training and certifications and they not even like to make more money. It's not like, Oh, I'm getting this certification and then my, my pay will increase. No, I'm getting this certification just to feel like I'm good at just like I'm good enough for this part of the, of the mm-hmm. thing. Right. Right? Like, like most fields you, you go for this cert so that you can like go up in the ranks Right. Like right. you spend this money to to niche down or like to clarify your 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 role so that you can like go into this other position mm-hmm. with more money or whatever. Right. To go up. That's not what it's like for us. We yeah. do that in order to feel like we're just 
good enough yeah. with where we, right, with what we're right. getting. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, and I'll probably get some, some kickback on this, but I, I think that our, our clients could really wouldn't could care less whether we have those certifications or not. They just want a real person in front of them that mm-hmm. understands what they're going through and can be there for them and be real with them and mm-hmm. be genuine with them and offer them some sort of way to, to move through whatever it is that they're, that they're going Absolutely. through. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I completely mm-hmm. agree. Right. And just like you said earlier, it's not, as if these things don't matter, right? But but I think we make those decisions out of a place of imposter syndrome instead of out of a place of like genuine passion, yeah. alignment, des- like right. desire to do that particular thing. Right, mm-hmm. right, yeah. Well, well, Danielle, I, I've got to be aware of our time and your time and <laughs> You know, I think we we could have this conversation all day long, and it was <laughs> yeah. This is this is great, great and meaningful stuff. And and kudos to you for, you know, in, in a way, standing up to, you know, conventional way of thinking mm-hmm. of things. And let's let figure out how to do this differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much, Gordon, for having yeah, me. I and, appreciate it. And you. I hope we can do this again. Tell folks how they can get in touch with you and find out more about your work and what you have to offer. Yeah, thank you. So we have an Instagram page where we are, you know, giving out content and sharing with you what we're doing. That is branches.of.life.llc. Mm-hmm. Right. And then we have a YouTube channel called The Human Behind the Therapist that we actually just launched this year and we're feeling really good and excited about and people are responding well to. All right. So that's The Human Behind the Therapist. Um, and then we also have our TikTok page, which is the same as the Instagram page, which is branches.of.life.llc. And then our website at www.branchesoflifetherapy.com. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Danielle, it's so good to reconnect with you and we'll hopefully have another conversation here soon. Well, again, a big thanks to Danielle for joining me on the podcast. And I really Love these kinds of conversations, having these meaningful conversations about stuff that probably we all think about internally. And I think um, Danielle was really hitting on something important for us all to remember is not to not to buy into a lot of the imposter syndrome. You know, I think there's um, sometimes I think particularly in our training, we come out of it thinking we're somehow or another inadequate in what we do and that we've got to pay our dues and, you know, have all this time spent. But I think we can we can all draw from our own life's experience and just really be able to have that translate into good clinical work and being able to share a little bit about our lives and share, share with our clients. Um, and I think the the, the other big take home for me with my conversation with Danielle is, is find what feels genuine to you. And I think we don't have to always uh, fall prey to the shoulds and ought tos, as I like to say. I, I know I said one of the things I'll say to clients sometimes, if you listen too much to the shoulds and ought tos, you'll just get should on. So um my little bit of humor for the day. But again, thanks to Danielle. And you can find her at Branches of Life Counseling. And there'll be links here in the show notes and the show summary. So you can uh, find out more about Danielle and her work. And also, I'd love to, again, extend the invitation for those of you that have maybe smaller group practices that are also insurance-based. Love for you to join this next co- cohort of the group practice focus group. Um Sorry, I don't have a more original name than that. But uh, anyway, this mastermind group, my next cohort, is getting ready to start. And I'd love to have you as part of that community as we get started with that for this next six months. And um, you can find out more about that by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group to 
to apply and find out more about that. And also, before we go, big thanks to our sponsor of the podcast, Therapy Notes. Uh, they are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. They're who I use in my practice and absolutely couldn't do without them. So kudos to them for um, doing all that they do. Um, you can check them out uh, by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure and use the promo code just Gordon, G-O-R-D-O-N. And you can try them out for two months for free. So that's it for this particular episode. Do take time to follow us wherever you might be listening to the podcast and look forward to being back in your ears and in your lives next week. Take care, folks. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer part of the Psychcraft network of podcasts you can find out more about the other great podcasts in the network by visiting psychcraftnetwork.com and if you haven't done so already please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com and get your free private practice startup guide along with a lot of other great resources and webinars and free things just by visiting. Also, be sure to follow us wherever you might be listening to your podcasts. This podcast is intended to be educational in purpose and is not intended to give legal, accounting, or counseling advice. If you need a professional, find the right person for that.